Okay. Now, now let's go to continue with the activities of the Congress. In this uh, occasion, we begin with the session nano number two, nanomaterials and applications. Work that we are going to see is uh, presented by Sepana Grava with the work IPRO, photoluminescence intensity in silicon rats rich oxide films by surface etching. Please start with it. study in Finaue. Uh, today I'm going to present my work and improvement of the luminous intensity of silicon rich oxides by surface etching. Um, this presentation contains an introduction, experimental details, results, and discussion, uh, conclusion, and the reference. Uh, so uh, the introduction, uh, the silicon nanoparticles can be beat in the electric matrix, have become an excellent alternative for developing the light emitting devices compatible with the silicon basic technology. Um, these devices have been obtained the, using different dielectric matrix, such uh, as uh, silicon rich oxides, silicon rich nitrous, and silicon carburetor. Uh, in the silicon rich oxides, uh, high temperature is uh, in the thermic and anelic is required to promote the silicon nanoparticles. Typical. The thermic and annealing is uh, 1,100 centigrade for three volts and the uh, nitrogen atmosphere. Uh, during the thermic and annealing, uh, the silicon, uh, the excess silicon atoms in the dielectric matrix uh, to diffusion as a uh, nucleation points, uh, leaving the silicon nanoparticulation formation. Uh, depending the silicon excess in the dielectric matrix in amorphous or or crystalline silicon nanoparticles will, will be formed. Uh, the, the size of the silicon nanoparticles uh, is also depend the silicon excess in the dielectric matrix. Uh, the controlling the size of the silicon nanoparticles and their nature or, or amorphous or crystalline is very important uh, because the electrical and optical uh, properties of the materials dependent on them. Uh, in the particular, the, um, the, light, the light emission energy depends on the silicon, the size of the silicon nanoparticles. For example, the, the, the silicon, the silicon rich oxide uh, contains a smart 
Science de Silicon Nanoparticles, eh, the High eh, Light eh, Emission Energy, and the, the Silicon Resource Science contains a larger silicon, science silicon nanoparticles, the, the lower uh, light emission energy. Uh, the silicon rich, uh, rich oxides thin with silicon excess uh, over 20% atoms show surface oxidation after thermic annealing uh, because uh, the oxygen atoms uh, present in the environment uh, are incorporated in the dielectric matrix after thermic analytic. Uh, this happened uh, because and the, the hot surface uh, on the sample uh, reacted with the environment. Uh, so in this work, uh, in this work, uh, focusing the study, the photoluminescence in the silicon rich oxides with silicon excess over uh, 12 percent atoms when the, the oxidant surface is etching. The experimental details, uh, uh, two layers uh, uh, were depositioned by the low pressure chemical vapor depositions. Um, the first layer, the uh, label is, is RO10, and the second layer is RO5. Uh, and in the system, the controlled uh, partial pressure of the gases report, uh, we can control the silicon excess in the silicon rich oxides. Uh, the second layer uh, uh, contains uh, more uh, silicon excess than the, uh, the first layers. The, the two layers uh, were thermonanalytic uh, these conditions, uh, 1,100 centigrades no, really. or three orbs and nitrogen atmosphere. Uh, this promotes the formation of silicon nanoparticles. Um, the next two, uh, the wet layers uh, were etching in, in these solutions, HD, uh, AD, water, in proportion uh, uh, one tenth. Uh, this etching is repeat the five times. Uh, the finally, uh, the uh, five different thickness uh, were obtained. Uh, the resultant discussion uh, in this graph show the the thickness uh, the both layers in the etching steps. Um, the similar thickness were obtained uh, in each etching steps. Uh, the both layers, the for comparison, uh, the photoluminous characteristic. Um, the initial thickness is 18, and the final thickness is 20. Um, uh, in addition, in this graph, show the etching rate in the etching states, um, the both layers. Um, in the fifth etching states, the value of the etch rate is very high, and the, to decreasing the following etching states. Uh, uh, this valor height is uh, because uh, the um, the the HF AD water solution has higher etching for the rate uh, stoichiometric oxide than the four silicon rich oxides. Uh, this indication that the surface was oxidated. And the uh, 15 etching states, the the etching rate. Increasing because of the silicon excess diffusion to the interface for the formation of the silicon nanopyramids. Uh, uh, in the photoluminescence shorts, uh, in these figures, uh, show the spectral the photoluminescence in the both layers. Um, the second layer is RO5, uh, present a uh, longer uh, emission wavelength than the first, uh, the first layer, is RO10. Because the first layer uh, contains the high silicon excess, uh, igual to <coughs> larger silicon sign nanoparticles, and lower emission power lines. Uh, in addition, uh, an increase in the intensity uh, is observed in the first and second and third uh, etching states. Uh, in this figure, uh, show the photonics versus thickness. Uh, uh, the initial thickness and the initial photon intensity is, is shot here. Uh, in the first etching states, uh, there are an increasing intensity in the both layers. 
uh, is tended continuous and uh, the 15 etching states uh, when the maximum intensity the photoluminescent uh, is per phase treasure. Uh, the, fol uh, the following uh, etching states uh, the intensity to the crust. Um, the increasing intensity is relation uh, to the etching of the stechiometric oxide layer in the surface. Uh, e and the decreasing in the intensity is relation to the lower number in the silicon nanoparticles in the dielectric matrix. Uh, to the analysis of morphology, uh, atomic uh, force micro microscopy measurements were performed. Um, in the beginning, the bot like presents and the in a marginal surface with agglomerates. Uh, these agglomerates indicate the, the formation of silicon nanoparticles in the, the electric matrix. Um, after each uh, 15 etching steps, the, it is observed that the agglomerates reduce the edge science and become sharper. Uh, by the mean the analysis study, uh, uh, high histogram shown here. Uh, in the initial states, uh, the higher uh, distribution is very wide, and the uh, 15 etching states uh, is reduction uh, with valor centers in 19 and 20, 20? no, 30 uh, nanometers. Uh, these values are close and the higher of the silicon nanopyramids formed in the east uh, silicon rich oxide and supra silicon interface running reports. Uh, in addition, in this figure, it show the uh, average rugosity and the density peaks uh, in the initial states and the, uh, the 15 initial states. Um, the average rugosity uh, at the each initial states better than decreasing in the, in the value. Uh, and this indication that the, the thin field uh, is uh, smaller. Uh, Low number silicon nanoparticles. Uh, in the crazy, in the intensity, the density peaks, in the, in, uh, this indication that the formation of the silicon nanopyramids in the interface. Um, the conclusions <laughs> is the surface oxidation increases the silicon uh, rich oxide field with silicon excess, uh, high silicon excess. Um, the low uh, photon photo intensity observed in the, in the initial states uh, is relation to the coefficient defect present in the uh, surface oxidizers uh, products after thermic analyzing. Uh, by removing the surface oxidation field, maximum photon intensity is obtained. Uh, in the, pho the photon intensity in the final states, is higher than the initial states. This will be due to the formation of the silicon nanopyramids in the interface. Um, uh, the reference and it's for the Okay. Uh, this is a very interesting work. Uh, I have some works related to silicon rich site, but uh, in this case, the point is the study of the natural interface. Uh, is, is, is this is you you studied the interface between a silicon substrate and the film that you mean silicon rich oxide? Uh, this, this is a um, question. Uh, you, uh, you study it. Your study is really related to the interface between the silicon substrate and your build. I said this because you are uh, etching with uh, a lot of attention. What is the evolution of the interface of the surface field? Then I, I think your field is um, influenced by the characteristics of the substrate. 
Okay. Uh, the, the question. Uh, the, the results that have you uh, report your voting are, in my view, influenced by the characteristics of the silicon substrate that you use in your paper. Because you, you don't show us uh, results about your substrate surface. Okay, and in, in this case, uh, the substrate silicon is uh, during the deposition is cleaner. Is actually or as you resilient to the substrate. Okay, what, 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 what were the steps previous to the film drop? Come on, uh, the, the substrate is, uh, is clean by the, the, the acetone. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, is is switching the oxygen um, native uh, is is dealing with the solution the uh, IRC IRCA IRCA is the the mineral and the composition the the formation of silicon in the pyramids is during the deposition, the, the silicon and all pyramids is during the deposition or, or the thermic analysis. But you are not reporting the geometric structure of, the, of this uh, fix. The nano, the nano pyramids. Uh -huh. uh, you, you don't, uh, I don't see in your presentation. The characteristics of the nano pyramids. Uh, in the literature, in, in the literature, uh, um, the signs, the report silicon nano pyramids. Uh, in this case, uh, I don't know characterization the surface. The surface. Uh, 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 Yes, you are characterizing the films from the top. Uh, 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 20 nanometers, per, but, but más llanos. Okay, okay. Pues sí, it's, it's a very interesting work. <laughs> but, 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 good conduction of the table because the, the audience <laughs> must have the, the, the words. Preguntas, por favor, questions. Because I, I have a lot of questions there. <laughs> <laughs> the book is the, the, the most important question. Some questions, yes. We have uh, two minutes. Two minutes? Yes. Spanish? <laughs> no, it must be in English. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in my view, is uh, you need to use the results are, uh, I, will, I think, are good results, but uh, maybe you need uh, to characterize your sales using another things. For example, you are only reporting FIM measurements and photoluminescence, uh, but the uh, photoluminescence is not so useful to get an idea of the real the structure of the film in my view. This is not okay. Some some question. 
no more questions. Okay, thank you for your presentation. Let's continue with the activities of the Congress. Um, the next uh, talk is uh, will be given by, by Karen Nelly Espinosa. His work is uh, titled The Evaluation of the Electrical Properties in Oxide, Manganese Oxide, Zinc, Rich Zinc, Zinc Oxide, Tin Films for appli Potential Applications in solid state supercapacitors. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Karen, and I will be presenting the work titled Evaluation of the Electrical Properties of Oxide Manganese and Zinc Oxide C, Team Fuels for Potential Application in Solid State Supercapacitors. Uh, the outline of the presentation will be the introduction to experimental procedure with the team field synthesis by Scutri. The results and discussion, which uh, are the structural and electrical characterization, and finally the conclusions. For the introduction, uh, we have solid state supercapacitor, we have electrochemical capacitors also, but this work for solid state, uh, they offer a promising solution for energy storage. Uh, what are the advantages of the supercapacitors? The high power density, rapid charge and charge capabilities, and extended lifespan. This comparing to normal batteries and also for electric, electrochemical solid uh, electrochemical supercapacitors, we eliminate the need for liquid electrolytes because they can be harmful for the environment. And we are looking for, uh, forward to solid state where don't, we don't need those electrolytes. For what are supercapacitors? They are the solution to bridge the gap between conventional capacitors and batteries. Also, the combination of zinc oxide and manganese oxide composite electrodes has been reported before in another uh, in electrochemical and solid state. And well, we're going to we're going to uh, search for a solution with this com with this combination of materials to offer a new electrode. Okay. Okay. Uh, for the experimental procedure, we have first the substrate cleaning. We need a, a clean substrate. Uh, this in order to obtain a uh, homogeneous uh, deposition in this puttery. Later on, the first layer of uh, the first layer that is deposited in the in the glass is the manganese. We use a manganese target with these conditions. And when we can see in the image here one one of one of the, the targets like the plasma that it's depositing. And the final layer of synopsis C, which is cosputering, we have the two targets at the same time. And we obtain a zinc oxide zinc film with these conditions. Finally, our structure, we can see in, the, in figure one, the MNO zinc oxide zinc structure. We have the substrate is one per one centimeter square. And the, the circle, the manganese circle is 0.8 centimeters, while the zinc oxide zinc is 0.4 centimeters in diameter. Each layer is around 100 nanometers. And uh, the first char uh, characterization we, we, we made was the X-ray refraction in order to know what we obtain in the deposition. So the first sample, uh, we uh, we found that we have an MNO base. We have a manganese oxide instead of the manganese that we, we have the target of manganese, and it presents a, a negative strain. We can see the, 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 the reference is shift with the signal. And this can be because of the cover, cu cubic structure of the manganese. It's trying to uh, put the ox oxygen in the face. Uh, the zinc oxide film, 
Yeah, uh, which is zinc, zinc oxide zinc. We uh, we found another in the literature that this this is stress, this is strength that is uh, of the signal can be attributed to interstitial zinc, which is uh, in, in the in the lattice of the zinc oxide zinc. Uh, the zinc oxide it can be introduced to zinc. Now, how do we know if we have a good electrode for a for a supercapacitor? We need to do the uh, electrical characterization. So for this work, we are using the frequency response analysis, FRA, and the bot plot. What is a bot plot? A bot plot uh, helps us to graph the response dependent of the frequency, which is normally plotted on the very mid horizontal axis. The graph is the gain in decibels and the frequency in hertz. So we have the gain is a transfer function between the input and output voltages with this relationship, and the phase is the shift between the, the, the input and the output voltages. The, this, vari this variation can be converted to degrees using the relationship of radian seconds to, P to pi and hertz. Here in the image, we have a normally uh, a low, a low pass filter, RC, RC filter. We have here the measurements, voltage input and voltage output. And we have the in game, a loss of gain in, in this point, which is the cutoff frequency, we're going to see in the next uh, slide. And we also have a displacement, and this displacement, this shift of the frequency of the signal can be attributed to capacitive effects. So how do we make our measurement in our, our uh, structure? We have the MNO at the zinc oxide sink. We have channel one on the MNO and channel two in the zinc oxide sink with a load, uh, uh, which is one kilo ohm, the, the, the resistor. And we are uh, using the, this structure as a device under test. We don't know what is inside, but we can see the output of the signal. And this output will tell us how the union of the, of the zinc oxide and the manganese is behaving. So, uh, here we have the results of the, of the measurement with the oscilloscope. We have in gain the decibels. We, we observe that at around 100 kilohertz, an attenuation starts. So we have here a negative attenuation, the negative gain, which is an attenuation, and of cutoff frequency. The cutoff frequency is uh, found at m minus three decibels. So at this frequency, we can use uh, the, 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 the relationship of the cutoff frequency and RC. So with this, uh, with this relationship, we solve for C and we found that at 1.12 megahertz, which is the cutoff frequency, a value of 142 picofarads. Uh, well, with this value, we also can relate the neg negative shifts are related to capacitive effects as we saw before. So we have here the RC, the same, the same behavior, and this behavior, uh, uh, it's, it's up until two megahertz. For the, for, from, from above that frequency, we have the, uh, the positive shift, which go from negative to positive, and these are related to inductive, inductive effects. So uh, we wanted to see how the signal was behaving also with the, the signal, uh, leaving behind the bulk plot. So we made a voltage time and the current voltage plots. Well, how would how did we did this? We made an evolution of each of each frequency. We have 100, 200, 500, 800, and 1 megahertz. Why? Because we started to see that at 100 kilohertz we have the attenuation of the signal. So we needed to know what was happening inside the terra union. So the evolution goes like this. We have the voltage time. Channel one is the, the measurement and in, of the input signal, and channel two is the output. And we can start to see the displacement, the displacement of the blue signal. If you can see a displacement and also an attenuation. The signal is it's is 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 smaller each each time we elevate the frequency. So this attenuation that is here in the bulk plot can be seen in the oscilloscope as the signal gets smaller, but also the displacement here in the bulk plot that we are making here of minus, 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 minus. It's here, it's it's here in the signal of the voltage time. Now, going to the IV, IV plots, we can see an ellipsoid. This ellipsoid, it's, uh, it's very telling because 
we see a widening of the signal, and this widening of the ellipse signal is related to capacitive effects. These effects start to diminish at one at two megahertz, but we can see here clearly how the the, the ellipse is widening, and this can be uh, used exactly for for knowing when when the capacitive effects start or when the capacitive effects stop. Why is so used for the super, supercapacitor? Supercapacitor normally are used at high frequency, and we need to find new solutions to to use electrodes capable of, of, behave, of behaving at these frequencies at 800 kilohertz. At one uh, the, the commercial capacitors are around uh, one kilohertz, two kilohertz, and those are the ones that are selling. But we need to innovate and go beyond the, the, the capacities and the frequencies. That, that we that we need to use. So finally, uh, we already have a value of capacitors, of capacitance. We found that it's a good conductor, a good conductor up until one, uh, 100 kilohertz. But now we need to know at the, at the final level if that capacitance is going to be used for, or, for us, or we need only the electrode as a, as a conductor. So for that, with the time constant, the determination and capacitance value, uh, the time constant is determined by the Greek letter tau, and the relationships are by per C. And also the relationship of, of the charge of the capacitor is given by Q, it's, it's the voltage input, one minus E at T uh, to the tau. So to the relationship of T and tau, the time, when we have T equals tau, the charge value of the capacitor is 63.2%, and for 5 tau, we have 99.3% of the capacitor. Uh, this relationship is in the figure in figure 7. We can see the charge of the capacitor, and for this, we can observe in every uh, square signal that we inject in a circuit, we can observe capacitive effects, and these capacitive effects we have here, channel 1 is the square signal of 5 volts, at about 500 kilohertz, and channel two is, this, is the signal that the, the structure of the manganese oxide and signal sensing is giving us. So we made a zoom, a zoom in of this, of this signal and time and in voltages, and we have that here no? in figure eight. So what we need to, what would we, what we need to calculate the capacitance value, we need to two courses, courses or two values, in order to calculate that the rising time, the rising edge time for the capacitance. So to avoid parasitic effects, we, we use the relationship before uh, explained. We have five volts minus one. So we start here to avoid these capacitive, uh, capacitive effects. The prof of the oscilloscope could, could be uh, uh, the could be noise for our measurement. So we need to eliminate that. So we have one volt. We have the percentages of the one tau of tau, uh, 0 0.62, and we add the, the, the one volt that we already have here now. So our final value is of 3.53 volts. We have T1 and T2, and delta T will be our tau. So tau, tap tau, when we solve for C, we obtain a value of 134 uh, picofarads. So here is the, the capture of the oscilloscope. We have course of one and two, and, and we, we obtain a 134 nanoseconds. So with this value and the value before obtaining, we have 142 and 134. We had a minus uh, and plus 10% of tolerance as the standard uh, capacitors are, are, are so. So finally, the conclusions. Uh, we were able to um, construct an MNO and zinc oxide zinc film as an electrode for solid state capacitors with the sputtering condition synthesis before given. We found that we have a phase of manganese oxide, and uh, with the combination of the zinc oxide zinc, we have a conductive film up until the one, 100 kilohertz. Uh, the frequency response analysis, uh, we, we could obtain the capacitance value. And we also observe the response in, in in frequency. And to continue this analysis of the frequency, we, we went to the voltage and time analysis and current voltage. 
And we found that, as I said before, it's a good conductor for frequencies below 100 kilohertz. And for frequencies about that, we have the capacitive effects, which can be see, seen in the widening of the ellipsoid. And finally, the time constant uh, gave us the, the value of the capacitance at, the, at a different frequency, and we could observe the charge and discharge cycle of this structure. So this charge and discharge uh, relationship it can be enhanced by different frequencies for applications so, such as braking in electric vehicle vehicles trains which is a, which are which is a, an application at low frequency or for power, fast power delivery for higher frequencies also for higher higher frequencies we have lasers transmitters plasma generators motors etc well, I would like to thank the technical support of Miguel Galvan Arellano, Adolfo Tavira Fuentes, and Norma Iris Gonzalez Garcia for all the support. Here, the, the, at the SIMBE staff, at the CES, at the Excepción de Electrónica de Estado Sólido, for all the, the materials and, and the, the equipment uh, he reused, the sputtering. And well, that, that will be all. Thank you. Okay. Like now, yeah, more, more, quite this question of this report. Well, I suppose there is a lot of questions. It's a very good work. I understand. Uh, this, uh, you see the literature. There is a lot of works related to supercapacitors. And in this case, uh, there is a, a lot of uh, possibilities to ask. It is you put the, the structure. Mm -hmm. For example, this is the conclusions. As, as you see, there is a in the case of the structure, you can make make some questions related to to the structure. The the structure produces uh, this kind of responses related to the why that the structure are built for. Maybe the, the most uh, relevant point in this case could be the uh, time response of the change of the voltage, for example. Then you have the, the voice. So uh, we, this is only uh, an example of a, a structure we made, but uh, as I said before in the literature, we have different structures. There are nanoflowers. They are using nanoflowers uh, for the for for a combination of manganese oxide and zinc oxide, and these are used uh, exactly for for capacitors. They have flexible uh, substrates and they're making the supercapacitors uh, flexible so you can put it in the clothes and use that as a as a as um instead of a battery instead of putting a battery you use the supercapacitor and when you flex it you can obtain energy so for i don't know bring some LEDs in, in the in the clothes some sensors for uh, uh, the sports when you have the 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 soccer sport, and you 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 see that every every person that is playing soccer is playing football has sensors has some I a mean, type of sensor. So this can be um, energized by the supercapacitors when they move. So that is where that, that, that that's the, the purpose of the supercapacitors to be the bridge between a, a capacitor and a capacitor and a battery. And it, does, it, does, it doesn't generate that much, or it doesn't uh, hold that much energy as a battery for a sake. And this capacitor has polarity. Uh, in in 
because I'm using senoidal si signals, it, it has uh, it doesn't have uh, polarity. So we need to you, for an application that you need polarity. Maybe we can make the electrodes uh, all of. But no, this one doesn't have a polarity. So you you inject the signal, and you and you obtain the signal with a positive and negative. Thank you. Don't question. The line. No. Well, I I need to I, I want to make a comment related to this work. Um, this this uh, work presented by Karen is a very good example of the possibilities that we have to use. Um, Available instruments. This work is um, very good. Is uh, Karen has uh, some publications. Well, uh, well, with good whatever. And the, uh, she do this work with an uh, oscilloscope. Some uh, passive uh, components. And the, the main contribution of Karen is that she is using the tips that we do in the CES and the knowledge that she gets from the IPM. This is, a, in my view, a very good work. I, I, I ask you for a question. Francisco is online. Yes, Francisco. Oh, okay. Francisco. Francisco, are you ready? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I'm sharing my presentation. Can you see? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. OK, can you see my presentation? Yes. OK, OK. Can you open your camera, please? Ah, yep. yep. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, continue with the work presented by Francisco Javier Cano. In this case, the work is related to the um, a theoretical study related to the um, interaction with the, the phase of titanium oxide and the influence that has the um, what what is the Francisco G? What is the main G? What is the main uh, the G, G and G O? What is the meaning? Graphene. Uh, yeah. yeah, in this case, it's graphene and graphene oxide. Graphene and graphene oxide. The iteration of these uh, two materials with titanium oxide. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Francisco Javier Gomez Cano, and I'm going to present to you my work, uh, which is titled Graphene and Graphene Oxide Interactions uh, into Titanium Dioxide and a Taste. Uh, Phase and its influence on the Bangav. Uh, this is a DFT study 
The authors in this work are Dr. Alexander Korolevich, Dr. Sandrine Kost, Professor Makovska, Dr. Ashok Adikari, Ashok Adikari, Professor Belmanis Ramanian, and Professor Adehali Kasiva. And this work is presented in the nanotechnology category, materials and applications. Okay, this is the content of this presentation. I will start with a brief introduction about uh, the materials I'm using in this in this work. Uh, then I will continue with the methodology. Uh, I will show you the results and I will find out with uh, the, the conclusions. I will start with uh, titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide uh, has three main uh, crystalline phases, rutile, uh, anatase, and brucate. Of these, the anatase phase is known uh, for its photocatalytic activity and its use it in air and water purification processes. So these different phases give the compound versatility and make it available in a wide range of applications. So. Uh, titanium dioxide is one of the most studied metal oxides for its uh, photocatalytic activity and properties. However, there's a limitation because in this case, a major limitation for its, uh, for this kind of application as a photocatalytics. Uh, using solar radiation, it's, uh, is its limited absorption uh, of less than 5% five, uh, 5 of its spectrum. Uh, I want to say something because uh, in this presentation, uh, this work is part uh, of a uh, biggest work related uh, with water treatment using different mechanisms as uh, photocatalysis and absorption. That is why uh, this work is mainly a uh, focus uh, for photocatalysis. But in this case, it's possible to use these, these characteristics of these materials and modify and, and, uh, for other kind of applications. Uh, that is why, uh, according to these limitations, that is why different authors uh, have proposed the use of different uh, strategies to modify or to improve the properties uh, uh, for this titanium dioxide. Uh, like for example, uh, it can be doped uh, with non-metallic element, like the position with not uh, noble metals, uh, the optimization of titanium dioxide morphology, or actually in this in this work, we are proposing the coupling of titanium dioxide with other other materials. In this case, we are proposing the use of two-dimensional materials. Uh, like, for example, uh, in the last decade, graphene and graphene-based uh, materials have been intensively uh, investigated due to their excellent optical, mechanical, thermal, and electronic properties and the wide range uh, of applications. So recently, new carbon-based uh, nanoscale materials uh, have emerged providing uh, an alternative uh, pathway uh, to graphene. Like for example, one option is graphene oxide. Well, graphene oxide is a layer of uh, graphene, but in this case, the difference grid, uh, between graphene and graphene oxide is that uh, in graphene oxide it's possible to find different uh, functional groups, like for example, epoxy, hydroxyl, carbonyl, or carboxylic uh, uh, functional groups. Uh, according to the synthesis uh, method we use to prepare this kind of material, it would be possible to find these this kind of uh, functional groups. So we have obtained a previous experimentally and characterized core shell nanostructures based on titanium dioxide and graphene oxide. In this case, as I told you before, for water treatment applications. So in this in this image, it's possible to see a particle, a particle of titanium dioxide, and we can see how this particle is covered with a layer of graphene oxide. In this experimental work, it was, it was possible to find uh, how, according to the level of oxidation in this graphene oxide, we can uh, modify the surface of these kind of particles. And as a consequence, it's possible uh, to modify the properties. And it was an interesting, interesting experimental work. So that is why, uh, in this case, uh, theoretical studies, simulations, uh, results uh, can be a starting point uh, for the design of appropriate experiments. Uh, for reproducing materials with desired uh, properties close to those prior calculated and optimized. Uh, that is why in this work, a theoretical study of titanium dioxide and graphene oxide is present throughout uh, DFT calculations. Uh, for this, we started with uh, building a graphene uh, layer 
In this case, uh, we can observe uh, the structure we built uh, of graphene, and then we incorporate a, a functional group in the surface of this in this graphene. And as a consequence, uh, the name now it's graphene oxide. Uh, we incorporate this epoxide functional groups, and this oxygen it's connected uh, with two carbons in this uh, structure. And additionally, uh, we build a, an, ante, uh, an a structure of anatase phase, uh, anatase titanium dioxide, and, as a, and then we incorporate this graphene oxide into the surface of this titanium dioxide. And we made the same for graphene, uh, uh, for graphene and graphene oxide. Uh, both the structures were incorporated into the surface of titanium dioxide. And as a consequence, uh, as a consequence, we obtained five. Uh, find different structures, uh, graphene, graphene oxide, titanium dioxide, and both a uh, hybrid nanocomposite or nanostructures, titanium dioxide, graphene, and titanium dioxide, graphene oxide. Uh, in this case, um, a graphene is a two-dimensional material composed uh, of a single uh, layer of carbon atoms arranged uh, in an hexagonal structure. Its unique electronic structure leads to a very characteristic band, uh, which includes a, a theoretical uh, band of equal to zero. It was the value we obtained for this graphene. It's previously reported in the literature. Uh, this means that there is no significant energy uh, between its balance band and conduction band. So in, in the structure band of graphene, the balance and conduction bands touch uh, at two, uh, a specific point in momentum space, now as a direct, uh, direct point. At this point, uh, the energy of the balance and conduction bands is the same, and which means that electrons can move uh, from one band to, to other bands with very little uh, additional energy. So then, with incorporation of hypoxide functional group uh, in the surface of graphene oxide, uh, it was possible to modify the electronic properties and give rise uh, to a band gap, because in this case, uh, we obtained a, a band gap of uh, 0.24 electron volts. Uh, because in this case, epoxide group uh, consists, uh, in this case, an, an, an oxygen atom bonded to two carbon atoms in, in the surface of graphene, which introduce an heterotaton uh, in a local distortion in, in the crystal structure, as we can see in this case uh, with the oxygen, uh, there's a distortion. Uh, this distortion can have a, a significant impact of, uh, on the electronic uh, band a structure of the original graphene, uh, because the presence of a uh, epoxy uh, group can break the symmetry uh, of the graphene and open a small band gap in, in, in its structure. So the magnitude of the band gap will depend on several factors, because, uh, for example, in other previous work, uh, published uh, previous works, uh, we demonstrate how when we incorporate different uh, uh, amounts of functional groups or actually different kinds of functional groups, it's possible to modify this, this, this band gap uh, in, in this graphene oxide. Then uh, uh, the structure of titanium dioxide, we calculate the band gap uh, for this structure of anatase phase, and the band gap we obtained, it was 3.2 electron volts, and this is really uh, similar to, to previous work uh, reported in the literature, theoretical and experimental work. And then, uh, uh, this is an optimized hybrid structure. In this case, it's titanium dioxide and graphite. Uh, uh, in this case, we can observe uh, the surface of titanium dioxide, and then we incorporate graphene oxide. And after uh, the optimized structure, it was possible to see no loss of uh, linearity in, the, in, in graphene. And additionally, uh, we found a distance uh, uh, between both surfaces of 2.8 uh, Armstrongs, uh, the distance uh, between titanium dioxide and graphene. And additionally, uh, it was possible to observe something interesting here because uh, we noticed that both structures are, are not connected. Uh, in the most stable configuration uh, of titanium dioxide and graphene, uh, a separation distance of 2.8, as we can see in this slide, uh, which point to weak uh, 
van der Waals interaction uh, in this surface. In principle, such a significant distance could suggest that uh, these materials don't show a strong uh, affinity for each other at the atomic uh, level, coupled with the fact that the lattice symmetry and atom arrangement of titanium dioxide in graphene uh, don't coincide, uh, don't coincident, uh, leading uh, to a weak interface uh, between two these these two materials. So, other thing is that the larger uh, the large interlar interlarger distance decrease uh, that the expected. A synergistic uh, effect limiting uh, the improvement of the material uh, properties in general. Uh, furthermore, according to the previous experimental investigations uh, by other authors, it's possible to say that a graphene is a material um, that doesn't react easily uh, to with titanium dioxide. So that uh, uh, if we need to use a or incorporate this kind of material in uh, with other material in a nanocomposite, it's necessary to modify the structure, uh, maybe by adding defects or adding different uh, functional groups to allow the connection uh, of both materials. In this other case, uh, we can see the, the structure uh, of titanium dioxide, but in this case is with uh, graphene oxide. Uh, Something uh, interesting here it was that the loss of the lineality due to the incorporated oxygen uh, group. Uh, and additionally, uh, we can observe here the formation of titanium and oxygen carbon bonds. So the optimization show that uh, both layers uh, will be connected throughout the oxygen uh, atom coming from the degraded epoxy uh, group. Uh, it was observed that carbon and oxygen bond uh, of the epoxy group is broken, created a new oxygen and titanium uh, bond. The observed connection between titanium dioxide and graphene oxide in this case via the um, epoxy group suggests that the formation of titanium, oxygen and carbon bonds indicating a chemical interaction between these, these two structures. So the epoxy group acts as a bridge uh, facilitating the bonding between titanium dioxide and graphene oxide. Uh, other thing it's important to say that uh, uh, there was not evidence uh, of a direct bond between titanium dioxide and the carbon atoms in graphene and graphene oxide. This absence, uh, this absence of a direct connection between these atoms suggests uh, a limited interaction between the layer studies uh, similar to titanium dioxide and, and graphene as, as it was possible to observe in the first uh, structure. However, the creation of titanium oxygen carbon bonds demonstrate the ability of these epoxy functional groups to promote uh, the bonding of titanium dioxide and graphene oxide. This finding um, uh, um, uh, provide insight into um, the possible integration of two materials with the epoxy uh, group as a binding entity. And uh, finally, it was possible to observe the presence of, uh, in, in this structure, it's a the structure of titanium dioxide and graphene. Uh, something uh, is that uh, it's possible to observe the presence of a direct uh, band of graphene, which could uh, indicate that uh, we have an uh, overlap of both uh, bands, reinforcing the lack of interaction or connection in, in, in both materials. So while in the other hand, uh, with graphene oxide, it's not possible to see this direct uh, bond. So we can observe, we can see uh, the reduction uh, uh, here in the band gap because uh, to compare with titanium dioxide, original titanium dioxide, uh, we can see here a backup of 0 0.95 electron volts. Uh, Francisco, however, Francisco, por favor, uh, reduce. Please, <laughs> your, your time is finished. Please uh, present out your conclusions. Oh, okay, okay, I go with the conclusions. Uh, okay, in general, the challenge is developed to a synthesis method to allow us uh, to maintain a core shell structure hybrid structured with the same titanium dioxide and graphene oxide ratio. So, and finally, as a conclusion, uh, the, con uh, the conclusions reveal promising connectivity, suggesting the potential for interactions and interface uh, formation between titanium dioxide and graphene oxides, contrary to what was observed with just graphene. 
DFT calculations further demonstrate that the incorporation of graphene and graphene oxide uh, create intermediate bands helping to reduce the band gap of titanium dioxide. And finally, uh, strategies to strengthen the connection between titanium dioxide and graphene oxide structures, as well as the integration of functional groups, may offer opportunities to optimize uh, the interface and improve the performance of these materials in different applications. Uh, some okay. of knowledge, and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Any questions you have? It's one. Okay. Uh, if you have a question, please. Yes, uh, we have uh, some questions, Francisco. Uh, okay. I have a question. What and uh, kind of pseudo potential did you use for modeling the graphene oxide in the titanium oxide? Uh, so, sorry, could you repeat me, please, the, the question, because I didn't hear correctly. I think what, uh, yes, thank you. What kind of pseudo potential did you use for uh, the, uh, using the simulation in the simulation of the graphene and titanium dioxide? So the potential. Uh, OK. Um, Honestly, in this moment, I have not this information uh, because uh, uh, not, I, I have not this, this information about this pseudo, pseudo potential. Um, okay. okay, thank you. Gracias, Francisco. ¿Alguna otra pregunta? Some, some other question, Marilu Hola, hola, Francisco. Ah, hola, doctora, ¿cómo está? <laughs> eh, una pregunta. Ah, no, ok. <laughs> One question. In the, in the slide number seven, you are presenting a, a photo, a micrograph. Is uh -huh. micrograph is yours or? Uh, you mean? Slide number seven. Yes, this. this, this is uh, yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, yeah, both both images are uh, about my work uh, because we obtained this kind of a structure in an experimental work, trying to incorporate titanium dioxide and graphene oxide. Uh, but this is a other work that is in process to to be published. One more question. One more question. Online, online. Okay. Yes. Please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Francisco, regarding the question that uh, Josué made you, is in the in the simulation that you are using in this hour, for this simulation, what are the variables that you are you are considering for uh, having these results? What are uh, the variables, the parameters that you need to know, what you need to use? Ah, okay, okay. In this case, for uh, uh, for this specific software, I'm using BASP, and I'm considering uh, variables such as uh, the size of the structure, and additionally, um, uh, I need to 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 check exactly. Um, Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, in this case, uh, uh, for example, when I need to run these, these structures, I need to consider, uh, for example, uh, I know the, the, cap, the cap points uh, parameters. I need to check, uh, uh, for example, something related with the size of the structure because we know it's something uh, regarding to the size, uh, for example. And and other technical parameters, uh, Doctor. But now I I don't have uh, in my mind these these parameters. Okay, we have a, a, a question in line, Francisco. Can you check the the chat? There are a question. Okay, you mentioned that graphene oxide was placed in. Uh, 
Okay, right, regarding the, the first question about a uh, uh, the surface. Uh, okay, in this case, uh, the position we use, uh, we incorporate this graphene oxide or graphene in, in the surface of a uh, this plane uh, 101. However, it's possible to try to incorporate in different uh, in different other uh, planes. Uh, for example, we have previous works uh, related with some theoretical work where it was possible to observe or we demonstrate how modifying the just the morphology or trying to change the percent of plant exposes in the surface it's possible to reduce the bank gap just along with titanium dioxide with with any other material um, that is why in this case if we want yeah we can try to to incorporate uh, any other material in the surface in uh, in any other kind of surface and it could be interesting to check what happened or what could be what will happen with with uh, the param with the uh, characteristics. Okay. Sorry. Thank you, Francisco. One, one more. We heard, we heard the answer, but not other question. Should the chat on this? The chat, or can you give that question? Ah, okay. Yes. Uh, yes. The, the question says, uh, you mentioned that the geo was based on the 101 surface of the titanium oxide, but what would happen if it was placed on another plane? Would it be possible? Yeah, actually, it was a question I replayed uh, before. Uh, because I was telling that, uh, for example, now uh, the position it was in this in this surface, but it's possible to change uh, and incorporate this graphene oxide in, in other surface. Okay, we are glad for your talk. Thank you, Francisco. Next, it's online. You come back. Are you ready? Yeah, yes, are you ready? See you my presentation. Yes, can you open your camera, please? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Francisco, uh, no, excuse me. Juan Carlos. Yes. Um, yes. We we need to continue with the Congress. Now you will going to present your, your talk related to the effect of thermal annealing in hydrogen atmosphere of um, silicon carbide films obtained by hot filament CBD. Please go ahead. Yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Juan Carlos Perez. I am uh, going to talk uh, about my work, uh, effect of thermal annealing in hydrogen atmosphere of silicon oxycarbide films of climate by a uh, hot filament chemical vapor deposition technique, uh, the, which was a development of the um, work in the semiconductor device uh, research, research center in the Benimarte uh, Universidad Autónoma de Puebla. The uh, contents in the presentation is uh, also uh, parameters for obtaining uh, fields with uh, oxycarbide, silicon oxycarbide, and experimental conditions for uh, annealing, results and discussion, uh, conclusions, and reference. Uh, the goals of the, my work is uh, in the study of the photoluminescence and morphology of silicon oxycarbide films obtained by the uh, HF. H uh, HFCD uh, technique uh, subject to annealing. Um, they perform a uh, well, deposit of the silicon oxycarbide films on uh, at distance and constant flow, uh, perform annealing in oxycarbide, uh, silicon oxycarbide films in uh, hydrogen environments at temperatures between um, six, uh, 640. Uh, to uh, 970 degrees 
And finally, uh, characterize the films obtained by the uh, Fourier transfer in spectroscopy, uh, photoluminescence, X ray, uh, photoelectron spectroscopy, and uh, atomic force microscopy. Uh, this is uh, the schematic representation in the figure uh, one of the uh, parameters for obtaining in the silicon oxycarbide films. This uh, work is focuses on obtaining a silicon uh, silicon ox oxycarbide uh, films by HFCBD technique for the uh, application for the hydrogen uh, annealing at different temperatures with the object objective uh, the study the failed emission uh, and the composition uh, to the do the uh, annealing effect in the table uh, table one uh, show the parameters for obtaining in the silicon oxycarbide films uh, in the figure one uh, the, this is a schematic representation of the parameters. In the figure two, uh, shows the experimental scheme, a uh, bueno, scan process in the HFCD system for uh, silicon oxycarbide films, a uh, fit crop. This is uh, the system, uh, but this is grow the silicon oxycarbide films uh, of a uh, uh, bueno, system in the application of annealing in a single hydrogen environment. Uh, the experimental conditions for annealing, uh, annealing temperature uh, was uh, 640 and 715, 817 and 917. And the annealing time uh, was 10 minutes and the flow, uh, the hydrogen flow uh, was uh, 62.4 uh, uh, ccm and the voltage uh, was 12 volts and the current uh, was uh, tw 24 amperes. Uh, this is the slide in the was the equipment uses in the characterization uh, the FTIR, uh, PL, and uh, AFM and XPS. Their results and the XPS uh, analysis in the table uh, two. In the table two, uh, two bueno, we can observe the experimental uh, parameters, the experimental parameters and atomic concentration uh, of the silicon oxycarbide films has deposited and a uh, silicon oxycarbide films annealing at a uh, temperature uh, 640 uh, and 816 uh, degrees. In the uh, atomic concentration, carbon atomic concentration is uh, at the has positive sample is 5.2 uh, uh, atomic percent, and the uh, samples annealing and nitrogen is the atomic concentration uh, 5. Uh, 5.2 and a uh, 6 uh, atomic concentration. However, these uh, values, uh, the aren't is very far from the uh, has deposited sample. In the figure uh, four, a uh, show the show the oxidation states, oxidation states corresponding to the uh, silicon two p, silicon two p of silicon oxycarbide films, uh, has deposited uh, C uh, three peaks and a uh, annealing temperature uh, increase two peaks uh, for the has deposited see, sample we have three peaks uh, initially initially for the 640 only two peaks and other on the other hand uh, temperature a 170 uh, degrees but both are maintaining. However, uh, the peak corresponding a uh, C uh, plus four, which is related to the silicon silicon dioxide, is uh, predominant. And the figure four uh, B uh, show the corresponding silicon dioxide silicon dioxide bonds of the um, of this uh, has deposited sample uh, positions in the uh, 100 
102.8 in the in cross temperature uh, 160 degrees 100 uh, 103.4 uh, electron volts okay. uh, confirm uh, this is in crossing temperature a shift to the um, shift to the right right is observed which uh, is related to stoichiometry this uh, the silicon dioxide uh, structure uh, also también a bond uh, 100 to 5 associated with the uh, silicon silicon uh, carbon is a position in 100.5 okay? associated with the uh, silicon carbon come uh, with confirms the presence of the carbon uh, in the films and the uh, FTIR uh, analysis okay? in the figure uh, figure 5 present a comparison in the FTIR spectra for the silicon oxycarbide films as deposited uh, for uh, samples annealing and nitrogen and for uh, temperatures. Uh, it was uh, found that the annealing um, temperature increased in the shift. In the sum, uh, there are some, some shifts for sample the peak uh, associated with the silicon oxide uh, silicon uh, in 1035. There is increases on uh, some shift for the peaks associated, okay? but a uh, shift to the right at the uh, increased temperature and the six, uh, 614. Okay. The same behavior is observed for the additional, uh, additional samples, however, uh, for the sample. Uh, 600, uh, 640 degrees. The spectrum is wider, uh, is wider uh, with respect for the uh, samples and for the samples and in a higher temperature. On the other, uh, on the other hand, the high, uh, higher temperature of the silicon, silicon oxide, silicon related bond shifts, uh, even more uh, the position corresponding to a uh, stoichiometry uh, silicon oxide. This correlation with the uh, expense results in the uh, PL uh, analysis in the figure uh, six show the uh, spectra for the uh, PL uh, for uh, of silicon oxycarbide films as deposited and the uh, annealing at temperature uh, in hydrogen atmosphere. Okay. We uh, analyzed the samples of the photoluminescence. It was um, that the Sample anneal at six uh, six hundred fourteen increase in photoluminescence intensity compared uh, to the has deposited sample. Uh, into uh, also shows a, sh a slight uh, shift towards um, a lower wavelength when increase in the annealing temperature higher than uh, six, uh, 640 degrees, the pearl intensity is reduced, which is relate to a passivation of the defect. Um, these are uh, associated with the formation of the uh, stoichiometry silicon uh, dioxide uh, form. Um, to determine the uh, contribution of each of the blue, uh, green, and red band, bands, a uh, contribution was performed using the uh, the convolution, using the three uh, Gaussians for the uh, old spectrum, okay. as shown in the in the figure uh, six and the figure C uh, B the three uh, Gaussians for the uh, spectrum is a uh, sample F3. Which uh, allows uh, in the use identific the contribution of the defects. So the defects see a relaxed oxygen, uh, see relaxed oxygen deficit in center, and see relaxed oxygen uh, vacancies and uh, non bridging whole uh, oxygen whole centers. See? In the figure uh, seven, uh, show the contribution of the blue, green, and red uh, band to the complete uh, photoluminescence spectrum for the uh, silicon oxycarbide films and need it at the different temperatures in a uh, hydrogen uh, atmosphere. The, um, finally, the 
FM analysis in the, uh, the roughness of the samples of the samples was also analyzed by the AFM. Uh, in the sample has deposited uh, the roughness is um, five nanometers and the sample F1, uh, the roughness is uh, 3.87 nanometers and the uh, uh, sample F2, the roughness is 2.43 uh, nanometers and the uh, sample F3, the roughness is uh, one dot uh, 99 nanometers. The, this behavior um, could be explained okay, to be like this arrangement uh, process, arrangement process in the silicon oxycarbide fins promoted uh, by the annealing temperature. Uh, this argument agrees with the XPS and FAT results. The, bueno, there are conclusions of my work. The silicon oxycarbide uh, films were deposited by the hot uh, filament CBD technique, uh, showed a high photolysis intensity in the uh, visible uh, region. The FAT and NXPS results showed the presence in the of the carbon in the films. The FT, uh, FTR uh, spectrum show a shift to the uh, bond CO silicon oxide and silicon bonds uh, towards higher wave numbers. This shift uh, behaves uh, the silicon oxide films tend to um, deoxide silicon as the temperature increases, which means that uh, these annealing temperatures, there is a improve uh, of the film's structure. Uh, and therefore, this uh, reduction of defects into the silicon oxide films, according to the uh, results, uh, the experts results. This uh, behavior, uh, this daily behavior uh, is related to the NS, the silicon related science and the silicon uh, related oxygen deficiency centers. Uh, this is defects due the, uh, to the trojan absorb uh, the sorption and carbon atomic mobility into the uh, silicon oxycarbide films. This process also uh, created the formation of the uh, bond silicon oxide and silicon, improving with the, uh, the stoichiometry of the uh, silicon oxycarbide films. When the uh, annealing temperature uh, increases, the, these uh, defects, uh, radiative defects, they are passivated with the atoms oxygen being a bonds a silicon oxide and silicon bonds, which is correlated with the um, shift to the uh, bonds, silicon oxide and silicon uh, by uh, FTIR, FTIR in the when as the thermal annealing increase. By the F, uh, F, AFM, it was against the roughness uh, decrease Okay. as the high treatment uh, temperature increase. Uh, this behavior uh, can be related to the regimen of the lattice in the silicon oxycarbide films, we, uh, which agrees the, with the XPS and FAT results and the behavior of the PLA uh, response. Uh, this is my reference. We thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Juan Carlos for your talk. Time for questions, maybe. We have these questions from the audience. Doctor Marilu, una one question, Juan Carlos. Just one? Marilu, the doctor Marilu. I have two. Two questions. Okay, the first one is, uh, how can you <coughs> uh, make the, the convolution in the peaks? Is a sower or only you fit a, a Gaussian? A, a Gaussian. The, the peaks is Gaussian and three, two peaks uh, associated with the oh. one um, red, uh, blue, green and red ones. But you use, what is the software that you use for this? The special? You, you propose the, the, the convolution according to the information no, that you have. Mm, yes, see, sí. yes. 
Uh, we propose a Gaussian uh, mathematical model uh, that you use for this. Okay. Uh... Could you uh, see my presentation? Uh, this the 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 convolution uh, of the bueno the contribution of the each of the blue, blue band green band and red band uh, using the three gaussians for the all spectrum this is the position uh, is uh, 2 2.8 2 2 2.5 and 2 electron volts in this uh, the reference The other question, please. Can you put the the last uh, the last the last uh, slide or your conclusion, please? Uh, no, the other, the last. I think we saw. Yes. Because you said that the. Ah, okay, yes, <laughs> okay. You said that you are uh, passivating the defects. No? Uh, the defects, this, uh, this, the radiative defects is seen up. But, uh, but, 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 uh, what uh, should we understand by passivating the defects? What does it mean that? Uh, okay. uh, passive the defects is a uh, synapse and the effects uh, are zero related oxygen vacancies and C uh, related oxygen uh, deficit centers. Uh, the passive passivating uh, these defects. What does mean passivate? Is it an electrical passivation? Uh, yes, she is uh, the passivation with the uh, oxygen atoms. Okay, thank you. Some question? Yeah. I have a question. I have a question for Carlos. Yes, in this slides, in this slides, um, in, in all your talk, with the title of the talk in, involves the hydrogen molecule, hydrogen atmosphere. Then, if you uh, show show us the uh, eleven slides, please, the same. Relevance. Yes, repeat me. The coronal minifence response. This uh, point. The number 11. The slice number 11. Yes. This, this one. Uh, I, I said, in all your talk, well, in your work, you involve, you include hydrogen atmosphere. The temperatures are high. And the result show in the figure number seven, we saw, we saw that the 
polyluminescence increases in the thin spark, then reaches a maximum and decreases. Uh, in my question is where where is the what is the role of the hydrogen? Because the, the, the hydrogen is uh, very important in this kind of materials. You have a uh, oxide material. Okay. Uh, the nitrogen is uh, in this case the uh, environment and the environment uh, environment and is uh, in the results by XPC no is, is not a analysis in the Detroit is analysis the silicon uh, car silicon carbon uh, the, and technique, the technique is not uh, useful for the for the level for the but uh, in my question is your polyluminescence response decreases, uh, uh, decreases are when you use higher temperatures. And the, the behavior is, uh, in my view, can you move from an um, idea on the role of, of the hydrogen? Because you can cancel the hydrogen role. Well, well, this is only a suggestion. And this maybe you need to review this. Uh, this. Yes. That's all for this moment, Juan Carlos. I I ask for the people for the clap. Yes. Well, we have finished this session, and uh, thank you for all for your assistance. Thank you.